Immunology is a beautiful and complex science. It's the science of understanding how your body can heal itself, how every day it detects and destroys invaders before you ever know you've been infected, and how it detects and destroys cancer cells before they ever take hold. And this one's the light chain, and that one's the heavy chain. Is there more contact with the light chain? And, the and you can study immunology and when it goes right and when it goes wrong on multiple different levels. You can study it at a population level, how we develop herd immunity and how we develop or don't develop diseases. You can study it at a whole human level, how this one human has conquered an autoimmune disease or how this one human has fought off an infection and become immune. You can study it at the cellular level. I study it at the far extreme, the molecular level. Viruses are at an intellectual level, fascinating, because they can be so simple. So you and I have 20,000 genes in our human genome, and that makes 20,000 molecules for 20,000 functions. But these viruses are incredibly simple. Ebola virus has just seven genes. The fever, four. Exactly four. So it makes four different molecules. It's a machine with four working parts. And so one question is, how can something so simple be so pathogenic and so deadly? And how come our much more complex selves and our human intellect are powerless against this tiny, simple thing? But on the other hand, if the machine is that simple, we can take it apart and we can examine it. And there are vulnerabilities there. And that's exactly what we've been able to do. What we're using here is not microscope, but microscope. It's, the one we use is 11 feet tall, and it has a massive and incredibly powerful beam of electrons operating at 300 kilovolts, focusing incredible illumination on a very small biological sample. And it has sophisticated electronics that allow all of those electron beams to be aligned and refined to get the perfect image. We've been able to understand how these very few molecules are folded up and how they work. We can see where they change and where they can't. And we can see exactly the shape that no one has ever seen before. We had developed a body of work where we finally cracked the structures of the key molecules of Ebola virus, Marburg virus, Lassa virus. And the field now, for the first time, has life-saving therapeutics against Ebola virus. It's not hopeless. The most powerful microscopes commercially available are focused here at La Jolla Institute on coronavirus to understand the molecular nature of the atomic bonding by which that virus is built. If we can see it at that level, that is the complete roadmap that we need to understand how to defeat it. The Coronavirus Immunotherapeutic Consortium is designed to unite all of the antibody discovery labs around the world to figure out which of the antibodies we are all making are the most potent against the virus, which ones should be delivered as a drug. And this is important because even once there is a vaccine, it's not going to be in all places at all times. There will be people that haven't yet been vaccinated. There are people that can't be vaccinated. We need to protect people while we're waiting for that vaccine. If we can find antibodies, we can give them as immediate and safe drugs for protection. But we got to find which ones are best. Our goal is to make sure that no one is priced out of these therapies, to look among the ones that are being discovered, to figure out which are the most potent, which ones are the most scalable, to make sure that we can deliver immune protection broadly around the world. Because this virus anywhere ultimately becomes this virus everywhere.